Picture this, the soft glow of a vintage television screen illuminating a cozy living room, the gentle hum of anticipation hanging in the air. It's a moment suspended in time, like a wistful melody that stirs something deep within you. And then, as the screen flickers to life, a world unfolds before your eyes, a world where friendships, dreams, and the complexities of adulthood intertwine in a delicate dance. If you've ever found yourself captivated by the subtle nuances of human relationships, then the 1987 TV series Third of Something must have been a revelation. It's that show that slipped into the fabric of your memory, leaving a mark that time couldn't erase. Perhaps it was your first glimpse into the lives of a group of friends navigating the unpredictable terrain of their 30s, a phase of life teetering between the exuberance of youth and the weight of responsibilities. As the characters shared their triumphs and tribulations, you couldn't help but find reflections of your own journey scattered across the screen. Maybe it was Michael and Hope's tender moments that reminded you of the fragility and resilience of love, or the raw authenticity of Elliot and Nancy's friendship that mirrored the camaraderie you hold dear in your own life. And then there were those memorable scenes that etched themselves into your mind, scenes that felt like stolen glimpses into real lives. The hushed conversations over cups of coffee, the unspoken tension that lingered in the air, and the heart-to-heart -heart talks that resonated like echoes in your own experiences. But let's dive beyond the surface, shall we? Behind the scenes of Third is Something lie intriguing tales that weave the fabric of its creation. Did you know that the show was born out of its creators' observations of their own friends and their struggles with adulthood? And the casting process that brought the characters to life was a story in itself, with actors who embraced their roles so fully that they breathed authenticity into every frame. So, as you look back on that first encounter with Third is Something, let the nostalgia wash over you. Reflect on those moments that made you laugh, ponder, and perhaps shed a tear or two. After all, the beauty of this show lies in its ability to remind us that life's tapestry is woven from threads of connection, vulnerability, and the sheer essence of being human. And now, as you journey through these random facts about the show, remember the way it touched your heart and left an indelible mark. Because Third is Something wasn't just a show, it was a timeless exploration of life's intricacies that resonated then, and continues to resonate now. Controversial impact, Third is Something's groundbreaking gay representation and a groundbreaking turn for American network television. The 1987 TV series Third is Something etched its mark in history with an episode that pushed boundaries and stirred controversy. The episode titled Strangers featured a scene depicting Russell and Peter engaged in a post-coital conversation, marking what many believe to be the first instance of gay male characters portrayed in bed together in a sexual context on American network television. Although the show had portrayed other couples engaging in romantic scenes, this particular depiction sent shockwaves through advertising avenues. Remarkably, the scene contained no explicit nudity or physical contact between the characters portrayed by David Marshall Grant and Peter Frechett. Yet, the mere implication of their intimate encounter led to a staggering loss of approximately $1.5 million in advertising revenue. Advertisers swiftly withdrew their commercials, spotlighting the deep-seated discomfort that the portrayal evoked among segments of the audience. In response, ABC took the extraordinary step of pulling the episode from reruns and syndication, effectively limiting its exposure. The episode only resurfaced once the series was released on DVD. David Marshall Grant, the actor behind one of the characters in the groundbreaking scene, pivoted his career toward writing and producing, contributing to plays and TV shows that continued to explore LGBTQ themes. Grant's subsequent projects, including Brothers and Sisters in Smash, showcased gay couples expressing affection with considerably less controversy. These later endeavors underscored the evolving landscape of television and its willingness to embrace diverse narratives. Third of Something might have encountered resistance, but its daring representation paved the way for the gradual acceptance of LGBTQ characters and storylines on American television. It stands as a poignant reminder of the power of media to challenge norms and catalyze societal change. Bedford Falls Productions, a cinematic thread in Third of Something's tapestry in the realm of television. Connections often run deep, weaving together stories that extend beyond the screen. The 1987 TV series Third of Something, 
a touchstone of its era, embodied this interwoven tapestry through its co-production by Bedford Falls Productions, a company whose name harkened back to a classic film. A link between the TV drama and the silver screen was none other than the iconic filmmaker Frank Capra. Third of Something, a series that delved into the lives of a group of friends navigating the complexities of adulthood, garnered acclaim for its relatable characters and authentic storytelling. But beneath the surface, a subtle connection to Capra's beloved film It's a Wonderful Life existed. Both the TV show and the film shared a producer, Bedford Falls Productions, a nod to the fictional town where George Bailey discovered the profound impact of his existence. This name wasn't the only bond between Third of Something and Capra's legacy. The production company's association with Capra's work extended further, as it was Frank Capra Jr the filmmaker's son, who co-founded Bedford Falls Productions. This lineage bridged the gap between the heartfelt drama of the 1980s and the timeless sentimentality of Capra's era. Through this connection, Third of Something inadvertently echoed the sentiments of Capra's cinematic masterpiece. The series captured the essence of human relationships, struggles, and triumphs, much like It's a Wonderful Life did decades earlier. While these two works may have belonged to different mediums, their shared spirit underscored the enduring universality of storytelling. In an industry often marked by shifts and changes, Third of Something paid homage to the past while crafting a narrative of its own. Bedford Falls Productions, by evoking the name of Capra's fictional town, wove together the threads of nostalgia and modernity. This connection, subtle yet significant, enriched the legacy of both the TV series and the cinematic treasure that inspired its production company's name. As we reflect on the intricate web of influence and inspiration, it becomes clear that the stories we cherish are interconnected in unexpected ways. Third is Something, a show that mirrored the complexity of real life, found itself tied to the heart of cinematic history through its association with Bedford Falls Productions. In a world where narratives intersect and reverberate, this connection remains a testament to the enduring power of storytelling. Third is something, a drama ahead of its time in the realm of television history. Few series managed to leave an indelible mark that transcends eras. Enter Third is Something, the 1987 TV drama that not only captured the essence of its titular demographic, but also garnered critical acclaim during its brief four-season run. Premiering on September 29, 1987, this intimate portrayal of a group of friends navigating the complexities of adulthood resonated deeply, swiftly becoming a cultural touchstone. The show's initial success was underscored by its placement at the 19th spot on TV Guide's prestigious 50 Greatest TV Shows of All Time in 2002. This accolade wasn't simply a reflection of its popularity, but a testament to the raw emotion and relatable dilemmas it portrayed. The series dared to delve into the personal struggles, career aspirations, and relationship dynamics of its characters, touching on themes that still resonate today. Interestingly, Third of Something experienced a second wave of recognition when, in 2013, TV Guide elevated its status further, placing the series at an impressive no. 10 on its list of the 60 greatest dramas of all time, the publication reaffirmed its significance within the television pantheon. Such recognition solidified the show's enduring impact and its ability to navigate the intricacies of human experience with a genuine touch. Yet, even as Third is Something basked in praise and acclaim, its journey came to an unexpected end. Despite its critical accolades, the show faced a harsh reality in May 1991, as dwindling ratings led to its cancellation. The curtain fell on a series that dared to explore the depth of its characters' emotions, mirroring the ebb and flow of real life. Third of Something was more than just a television series, it was a reflection of a generation, a timeless mirror held up to the complexities of life in your 30s. Its enduring legacy stands as a reminder that emotions are universal, and that even in the ever-changing landscape of television, storytelling that resonates can leave an indelible mark. In the end, Third of Something took its place in television history, a drama that encapsulated the essence of its characters and the zeitgeist of its time. Its journey, marked by acclaim and cancellation alike, remains a testament to the power of authentic storytelling. And in the ever-evolving world of television, where trends may come and go, one thing is certain, 
The legacy of 30 something remains etched in the annals of drama. A reminder that emotions are, and always will be, timeless. Endless. 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 The word 30 something, a hallmark of the series title, became an enduring linguistic presence as it found its way into the prestigious pages of the Oxford English Dictionary. This linguistic journey was a direct result of the series' resounding popularity, offering a glimpse into the cultural impact of 30 something. Premiering in 1987, the show delved into the lives of a group of friends navigating the complexities of adulthood. Its portrayal of the challenges and aspirations of individuals in their 30s resonated deeply with audiences, propelling the term 30-something into everyday language. Beyond linguistic legacy, 30-something also amassed an impressive collection of awards, boasting 13 Primetime Emmy Awards out of 41 nominations and securing two Golden Globe Awards. The series, helmed by creators Marshall Herskovitz and Edward Zwick, captured the hearts of viewers and critics alike, solidifying its place in television history. The accolades recognized the show's exceptional storytelling, character development, and its candid portrayal of the struggles faced by its ensemble cast. While the spotlight often shines on the captivating narratives and exceptional performances within 30-something, it's worth noting that Ken Allen and Patricia Weddick, who portrayed the married couple Michael and Nancy Stedman on screen, also shared a real-life bond. Their on-screen chemistry translated into a genuine romantic connection, leading to their marriage off-screen as well. This intersection of fiction and reality added an extra layer of authenticity to their performances, further resonating with audiences who found their character's journey relatable. In summation, the 1987 TV series 30 Something not only introduced the term 30 Something into our lexicon, but also earned its place in the annals of television history. With its numerous awards and unforgettable characters, the show remains a testament to the power of authentic storytelling and its enduring impact on popular culture. As we bid adieu, it's clear that 30 Something is more than just a show. It's a time capsule of emotions, a mirror reflecting the intricacies of life's journey. As you traverse through the episodes, you might find yourself nodding in recognition, moments of laughter, or a subtle tear in your eye, all evidence of a personal connection that transcends time. Consider those characters, their dreams, dilemmas, and dialogues as echoes of your own experiences, as if they are part of a story you've penned in the pages of your life. The series didn't just capture the essence of a particular era, but also the universal pulse of human relationships, aspirations, and the challenges that come with growing up and growing older. As the credits roll on this chapter, let the magic of 30 something linger in your thoughts. Take a moment to reminisce about your favorite scenes, those lines that struck a chord, and how the characters' journeys mirrored your own. Were you a dedicated hope, a spirited Michael? Or perhaps a bit of Elliot's wanderlust resonated with you. Now, it's over to you, your turn to share your cherished memories, your personal tapestry woven with the threads of this captivating show. Drop a line, let your thoughts flow, and let's create a symphony of recollections that pays homage to a series that left an indelible mark on our hearts. Thank you for journeying with us through the captivating world of 30 something. Your time and enthusiasm mean the world as we celebrate the power of storytelling that bridges generations and ignites connections. Until we cross paths again in the world of words and memories, keep the spirit of 30 something alive and let's continue weaving the tapestry of shared experiences, one memory at a time. Warm regards and thank you for letting me be part of this reflection. This reflection. This reflection.